Welcome back to Charnbot Barbecue. On today's video, I will be making loaded fries with pulled pork, but better. Lift off and the clock has started. For these pulled pork loaded fries, I'm gonna smoke a pork butt, I'm gonna make some smoked queso, I'm also gonna make a chimichurri ranch, some barbecue sauce, some toppings to go on top, and the fries just aren't any regular french fries. I'm gonna make some homemade masa fries. So to start with the masa fries, you wanna take two rests of potatoes and boil them and make them look like mashed potatoes. Then you're gonna take two cups of masa flour. Once you do that, you're gonna knead it with your hands and make sure you get in there and massage that masa flour. Then you're gonna take one cup of water. Go ahead and mix the water and flour and potato mixture around. Then you will incorporate some extra flavor. I'm using some Heath Riles garlic jalapeno rub. Look at that rub. And then once you knead that around, this is what it's going to look like. You're there going to place it on a cutting board or some flat surface, and you're gonna use some ninja skills. Ninja skills. Once you've earned your black belt, you're gonna go ahead and make sure the dough is in a rectangular form, kind of like shown. Grab some saran wrap. You're gonna need two pieces of saran wrap, lay it out on a flat surface. Then you will take your dough and you're gonna place it on that saran wrap and then cover the dough with the saran wrap. Once you have wrapped your dough, you're gonna set it in your fridge overnight until you're ready to fry. Now time for some pork butt action. So you're gonna get your pork butt, you're gonna take a bony knife, take your knife and you'll go ahead and cross hatch, scoring your pork butt starting with one side and you'll move over to the other side. What this will do, it will help the pork fat render down and also will help with adding any rubs and seasonings that we're going to do in a second. That's what it should look like. Now it's time to rub your butt. We're going to use some Kaler Hogs barbecue rub. Sprinkle that on there. Make sure it's coated very liberally. I'm also going to add one to one salt and pepper ratio. Kind of add a little bit of a Texas style pork butt. Make sure the bark is nice and set. And then you're going to go and pat your butt. And this is when it's fun to play with your meat. Once you do that side, you're actually going to flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. And here is some editing magic to show you that side is done with the fat cap. It is now smoked queso time. You will take one block of Blanco Velveeta or Melton cheese, one whole package of pepper jack cheese, and my dog wanted some of that cheese. Throw it in the pan. You're also going to take one can of diced tomatoes, green chilies, and or rotel and then also one can of diced green chilies. Also put that in the pan. And then this next thing is a good secret of mine. It's cream jalapeno. If you can find this, the only place I can find is at H-E-B. Shout out to H-E-B. Put that on top. And then we're gonna add some seasoning. I added some hot sauce. This is Bravado Spice Company, black garlic. It's kind of hot, so you didn't wanna to put too much in there. Then I added some Heath Riles garlic jalapeno rub. Just sprinkle it on top, and then you're going to use some Meat Church Dia de la Fajita. Same thing to go on top of the queso, and then your queso is going to be ready to go. And then you should be ready to go ahead and throw this on the smoker. For this cook, I was using mesquite, a mixture of pecan, and also some cherry wood. And I wanted to make sure that the smoker was sitting about 250 for the entirety of this cook with the pork butt and the queso. And the pork butt's going to take longer. I think I had it sitting at about seven hours before I actually wrapped it. And then with the queso, honestly, you can kind of put that on closer to the end. And with the queso, maybe an hour, hour and a half, it doesn't take too long. While I was waiting for the queso and the pork butt to finish, I went ahead and got some of the other sides and condiments that I was ready to do. So let's go ahead and show the chimichurri ranch. You're gonna take one whole bunch of parsley, you're gonna dice that, put this in a bowl, they're going to take some cilantro as well, tear off the head of it. You're also going to dice this. You want to make sure it's nice and fine for this chimichurri ranch because you don't want it to get stuck in the bottle that you might be using. And I went ahead and separated it. This top half I'm going to use for red onions and cilantro. This bottom half I try to make sure it's nice and fine. So use that reserved cilantro. Go ahead and put it in a bowl by itself. And then you're going to take this other cilantro and add it to the parsley in the bowl that you had already. Next, you're going to take some granulated garlic and go ahead and sprinkle some in the bowl of parsley and cilantro. Now, I didn't have any fresh garlic, so I had to substitute this. Next, you're going to take one Hidden Valley Ranch seasoning packet. Go ahead and throw that in the bowl as well. Then you're going to whisk to combine. 
Next, you will take one cup of buttermilk. Go ahead and put that with your seasoning mixture. Then I added one cup of Duke's mayonnaise. For the mayonnaise, I actually did measure it out. I wanted to make sure that it helped with the consistency of the ranch. Go ahead and put that in the bowl as well and whisk to combine. Once you are done incorporating everything, this is what the final product will look like. For our garnish, we're gonna take one half of a red onion, cut that in half. Then you wanna take the top off and then the bottom off and you go ahead and start slicing and then you will also start dicing. Now I wanted the red onions to be not too fine, but I wanted to make sure that it added a good crunch to the masa fries. Take your onions, put them in the bowl with the cilantro you're gonna mix it up a little bit. Then you're gonna cut two limes in half. You're gonna go ahead and take the juice of those limes and squeeze them into the bowl. What this will do is help with the acidity of the dish once it's all complete. And then I added some of the Heath Rallis garlic jalapeno rub as well with some freshly cracked salt and then freshly cracked black pepper. And that is gonna be the final product of your garnish once you have mixed it all up. Once your pulled pork has hit an internal temperature of about at least 160, and once you like the bark that it's sitting at, you're gonna take two pieces of butcher paper and you're gonna roll up that pork butt. Then you're gonna place that pork butt inside of a lasagna pan, lemon pan. And what I did is I took some Reynolds wrap and actually covered the pan as well. Take your meat probe, you're gonna take that meat probe, put it in the deepest part, put it in the oven. I had this oven sitting at 300 degrees and you're gonna finish off that pork butt until it reaches a, an internal temperature of 203. Once you reach your internal temperature, you're going to let it rest for at least an hour. And while I let the pork butt rest, I went ahead and got my masa fries ready. Dice them to look like french fries. You go ahead and put them in a fryer. I already had this fryer preheated to 325 degrees. You're gonna fry your masa fries for about three minutes. You wanna make sure that you time out the frying period to make sure you don't overcook anything. Once the three minutes is up, you're going to take out the masa fries. And what I did is I just used some tongs, put them in a bowl, and I seasoned them with some salt, pepper, some paprika, and some garlic powder, and I just tossed them. So even though the pork has been rested for about an hour, your pork is gonna be very hot. And you want to go ahead and pull out the bone as you can tell it just slides right out that's a good sign of a really well cooked pork butt and you're just going ahead and pull that pork that is some delicious looking pulled pork now you should be ready to go ahead and assemble the fries take your masa fries put them on a plate take some of that ooey gooey queso and drizzle it on top of those fries kind of like poutine in a way but a tex-mex version i guess then you're going to take some pulled pork go ahead and place it on there some more pulled pork and just however much you want. Then I added some barbecue sauce, put it on top. This was Franklin's pork barbecue sauce, and it's gonna go really well with the pork that we made. Then you're gonna take that chimichurri ranch that we made, put it on top, and then take some of that garnish as well. Oh my goodness, look at that garnish. This is the best part of making these videos. I get to try the food that I cooked. We'll get everything on there. Let's try it. Oh my goodness. That is so good. Let's get some more pulled pork over there. The queso, the barbecue sauce, the vinegar that's in the, that barbecue sauce, the acidity from the cilantro and red onions, the masa fries. How do I describe those masa fries? It's like if you mixed tamales and french fries together. Like the outside is crispy and then the inside is nice and soft like a tamale would be. So delicious. The pulled pork is spot on, has that smoke flavor to it. The queso adds that cheesiness to it. You've got to try this recipe. This was my pulled pork loaded masa fries. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any other crazy ideas, throw them at me, comment them down below. Also, do not forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.